back. If you are new here, my name is Laura and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how I make my sourdough artisan bread. It is going to be super simple. I want to make it simple for you guys and easy so you can do this at home. I have here all of my ingredients in front of me and I'm going to show you guys what I use and what I like. So first of all, I'm going to use bread flour. You can use all-purpose flour if that's all you have. Just make sure it's unbleached. If it is organic, it's just a plus. It just makes for better rising and better tasting. And also, it's a little bit better for us. So I always go with the King Arthur's organic bread flour. And then here I have my sourdough starter that I fed last night. And it already doubled, so it's ready to go. And it's nice and bubbly. I have my Redmond sea salt that I um, that I love. I love the salt. We I use it to cook with everything. Only salt that I use. And then over here I have my glass bowl, my whisk, my spatula, silicone spatula, and my dough scraper. So these are the things that I'm going to use in here. And then on this side I have my filtered water. It's very important to use clean filtered water for this. Um, it just makes for better bread overall. And then also my scale. I almost forgot. This is a, one of the very most important things. That way you measure everything and you get everything perfect. So that makes all of these things make for really good bread. And that's what I've um, learned through a lot of error and just learning and trying over and over again. I've tried different um, sourdough techniques of making sourdough that I've seen here on YouTube, but this is the one that worked for me. And um, I hope that you guys like it. I hope that you guys can get this working in your house and you guys can get some really delicious sourdough bread. Because I know it can be very intimidating, and it was for me, but yeah. This is what I'm using. These are my ingredients, and um, I'm gonna bring you guys in now. That way you guys can see it closer and see the step-by-step -step process. And let's get started. I'm gonna set my scale out and set it to grams and make sure it's at zero. Okay, so it's ready to go. I'm going to put my glass bowl on here and it's weighing the glass, so we're gonna clear that. And we're going to add 400 grams of water. It has to be like room temperature or a little warm. You can warm it up very little if it's really cold where you're at or if your home is really cold. So I went over just a tad, so I'm going to take some out just to get to that 400 exactly. So it's 401, that's okay. So now I'm gonna add 100 grams of my sourdough starter. And this is how it looks. It's a very bubbly in there. You can see all of the bubbles and it is very, very alive. It's awesome. Now I'm going to add the 100 grams of my mature starter to this. I have to set it to zero. All right. Now I'm going to mix it in really good into the water. Now I'm going to add my 400 grams of bread flour to this and 100 grams of whole wheat flour. You don't have to do the whole wheat flour, but I like to add a little bit more fiber to mine. So I will do 400 bread flour and 100 whole wheat. And make sure you set this to zero every single time you're adding new ingredients. Four 
we're almost there. A little bit more. Okay, now I'm going to add my whole wheat. And this whole wheat flour is also from King Arthur and it's the just 100% white whole wheat. I'm adding my whole wheat flour here, just 100 grams, here we go. And I'm going to mix everything in really good. And I can link all of my things that I'm using if you guys are interested. A lot of this stuff is from Amazon and it's very inexpensive and it helps um, if you're going to start making bread like more than once um, it pays to just have these things and it's just turning like a very shaggy dough I'm going to take this off since we're using it for right now show you guys how this looks just trying to get everything incorporated into the dough Scrape the sides if you have a lot of dough stuck to them. You can also use a spatula for that, but I usually don't have a lot. Okay. Okay, so that is it. So now we're going to leave this for 60 minutes. So go ahead and put a timer on your stove or on your phone for 60 minutes. I'm going to cover it with my towel and I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. It's been 60 minutes and now we're gonna add our salt and I like to add a little bit of water at the same time. I'm going to add 10 grams of salt and I already weighed this out. And 10 grams of water. And I like to keep a bowl of water on the side so I can wet my hands. That way my hands are nice and wet whenever I'm touching the dough. Now I'm incorporating that salt and water into the dough. And you don't have to be super gentle with this. As long as you, you just have to do this until you don't feel any more like salt particles in the dough. Okay, wet my hands again. Now I'm going to do eight stretch and fold and I'm going to rotate the bowl around so that way I get each side. I wet my hands. Over, 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 six, And now we're going to bring it over and I like to tuck it in. And if you want to, you can scrape the sides. And I like to kind of form it into a ball already. Just like that. Now I'm gonna cover it and let it rest for another 60 minutes and you're gonna repeat this process two more times. Been another 60 minutes, and now we're going to repeat the same process one more time after this. So I'm gonna get my hands nice and wet, and we're gonna do the eight fold as we're rotating the bowl. And I like to use both hands for this, and you see that the dough is a lot more relaxed. It's almost window pane. Five. 
six, seven, eight. Now we're going to bring it over and tuck it in. into the bubbles a little bit Mama, and we'll go, which is good. I'm gonna cover it and let it sit for another 60 minutes and we're gonna do the same process again. They stretch and fold and rest it for another 60 minutes and then after that we are going to do the next process. Dough is done resting. This was the last 60 minutes of doing the stretch and fold. So now I'm going to wet my hands and we are going to lift up and I'm going to show you guys because it's so hard to explain. So we're going to lift up and then spin and we're going to do this about seven times. Two. Seven. Okay, so there we go. So now I'm going to dust the surface with some flour and we're going to put it on the counter. I'm going to sprinkle some flour on the counter and we're going to put that dough on there. And now we're going to use our dough scraper or bench scraper. I don't know exactly the name of it, but we're going to use it to help us form a really good ball. So. And I just pull it so I go like this. I tuck in and pull. And then I go do it again until I form a really good ball. Okay, so that looks really good. Now we're going to cover it and let it sit here for about 30 to 40 minutes. And then we're going to flour this and put it in here. And we are going to put this in the fridge overnight. And in the morning, we're going to bake it. was a bit loud so I decided to do a voiceover for this part but I'm just flipping over the dough and we are going to shape it I like to pull the sides and bring them in all four sides next we are going to pull all four corners and bring them in to the center. Now we're going to transfer the dough into the proofing basket and I did sprinkle a little bit of flour in there. And now I'm going to pinch all of the seams together that way everything is nice and closed and I'm going to top it with a little bit of flour on top, not a lot, just a light dust and we're going to cover it with a clean towel and put it in the fridge overnight.
back we are on day two I just took my sourdough out of the fridge and I have it here right in front of me it's important that you do this kind of fast um, so as soon as the oven is preheated and I have my Dutch oven in there and I preheat it with the oven that way everything is nice and hot and it's preheated at 500 degrees so as soon as your oven has been preheated for a couple minutes is the time to take the sourdough out of the fridge so that way it's still kind of it's cold while you're I'm scoring it and doing all of that. So I bake it at 500 for 25 minutes with the lid on and then after that I lower the temperature to 450 for 15 to 20 minutes without the lid. Um, so that's just my timing. I just check on it the last 15 to 20 minutes depending on how crusty I want the top. So I'm going to bring you guys in closer that way I can show you the process of me scoring it and all the extra little things that I do to it. And I have some parchment paper here and I'm going to just flip it over onto the parchment paper. I flour out and I'm just using all-purpose organic flour, unbleached. I have my tool here so I can cut the nice designs. And the most important thing is just to do any kind of cut. You can just do one cut if you want to, don't want to go too fancy. You can also just use a knife, a really sharp knife. Um, to do like a little square on top or just one across that gives the dough um, it just helps it not have a lot of air bubbles inside because the cut kind of lets those bubbles come out so I am going to put it on here okay, and now I'm going to put some flour on the top I like to do this for the design and it is very cold. I just took it out of the fridge. I zoomed you guys in a little bit more. So I'm just going to do this across. Okay, and then I'm going to do some designs right here. And I got all of these tools from Amazon, so I'm going to link everything that I have from there. It's um, very inexpensive, especially if you're going to start doing this and cooking your own sourdough or just cooking your own bread, baking your own bread. So there you go. That is all. Now I'm going to bring in my hot Dutch oven and we're going to put it in. In the oven it goes. I've been letting the bread sit here for a couple minutes now. I think it's been like 10 minutes. 10 or 15 minutes and it's still a little hot but I want to cut it so I can show you guys how it looks on the inside. You can see the slit that I cut and then it did slit on this side because I feel like I didn't do it deep enough. I usually go double with the big one but it's still really good. It's gonna look just fine inside. I'm gonna cut the bread on this side and my bread knife is from a ballerina farm I use it all the time still kind of hot. oh my god the smell of sourdough is amazing it's still a little hot so I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes if you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm planning on making other baking videos, other sourdough related videos like using our discard, um, feeding our sourdoughs, and how to start a sourdough. Um, also, I want to do some videos on regular yeasted noni breads. I have made tons of those different flavors, so look out for all those videos and I also 
plan on doing all my other videos, my cleaning organization. I just wanted to put this video out there because it is very informative and a lot of people that follow me on Instagram always ask me how this is done and it's very hard to just explain it. Um, it's easier to show it um, like in a video. So that's why I made this video so it could be a bit more helpful for you guys if you're planning on making sourdough, if you're new at making sourdough bread and all of that. So hopefully this does help you out. Um, and thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. You added colors Like the moon is the snow We don't care about the others You set my world on fire You're my heart's desire I just wanna love you, just wanna